Forecasting the weather in Patagonia for climbers is serious business. As a climber, if you blow the forecast, things can get extremely dangerous extremely quickly. Just this past season, at least three climbers died from exposure and hypothermia after they got the forecast wrong. So take it very seriously, learn all you can. Full disclaimer on this video, I'm not a professional meteorologist or don't even have any meteorological training at all. I'm just a climber who's been there for two seasons and had some success being able to get up at some of the larger peaks. And the four months or so I spent there, I've tried to learn as much as I possibly could about the weather. And so I'll try to impart that information to you here. If you're going down for your first trip and you're trying to learn about the weather forecasting, the, the place I suggest you start is padaclimb.com. And you can just click on the main page on the left hand side there'll be a link to the weather forecasting here rolando Garibotti, a much more experienced and accomplished climber than i lays out some of the principles of the weather forecasting in uh, southern south america he explains the difference of what a mediagram is this is like a, a system of graphs that they use to represent a forecast versus like traditional weather maps and the advantages and disadvantages of each he describes some of the variables that are most important for predicting the forecast there, like the pressure, temperature, precipitation, wind, and dew point. Gives a little information about reliability, and then it gives you kind of details and instructions on how to read the weather maps and how to set up the mediagrams. So the classic way, and the way it seems like most people are just using because it's a little bit easier to pull up and read is the mediagrams. And these, these dated instructions from Rolo go something like this. You click on the link to the NOAA mediagram webpage, you put in the coordinates, negative 49.3, negative 73.1, which correspond to a, a point just south of Cerro Torre. It seems to be the best spot for getting the forecast for the Sheltan Massif. You click continue. You have to go through a few pages here, selecting the duration of the forecast, the forecast start time. You wanna include winds, both speed and direction. And then you have to do this little thing down here, which tests to make sure that you're not a robot. So I'll do all that. Click get mediagram. You can see that was a little bit cumbersome. But eventually I end up with this, this NOAA mediagram here, which gives me the precipitation, wind speed, temperature, and all these other pressure and um, dew point, they're all in one graph. And that's easy enough, I guess. It, unfortunately, you have to click through a few, several different web pages, which can kind of be slow on the LSHL 10 internet, but it works and people have a lot of experience, have been doing it for a while and they have had, had success with this. I just think that since Rolo put out those instructions, there might be a better way to do it now. There's been some new developments and new, better website, I think. So another problem with this web page is that looking for the, the wind forecast, it only gives the wind forecast at 10 meters above the ground. And then the numbers of the wind speed, this is the number in knots of the predicted wind speed. The upper one is the degrees based off like a compass degree bearing. These numbers are hard to read directly with a, a time forecast. So sometimes you have to like line up your cursor and like go through it like this and it can be difficult to do. So the way that we found that I think is a little bit better this past season was a, a new website called SpotWX. And this will give you a nearly identical forecast using the NOAA GFS model, but it will give you it in a little bit more useful graphical way. So to do that, you first go to the website, you input those same coordinates, negative 49.3, negative 73.1, click search. You even get a little map here. That well, actually it didn't see. So you can see the map sometimes doesn't go to the right spot. We're looking for over here more. So I'll try once more. What's going on here? Oh, I need a comma, I think. There we go. Comma gets me into the right spot, this region near Cerro Torre and Alshal 10. And if I want to get the same forecast, I'll click on this GFS model here, which is the 10 day one at the with a resolution of 0 0.25 degrees. So great, now this is pulled up. As you can see, it looks pretty similar to the, um, the NOAA mediagram we were just looking at, but fortunately the, the web page is more interactive. The graphs are all adjustable. So I'm not a big expert on the precipitation or the temperature forecasts. You guys can learn about those as, as you spend more time there watching that stuff closely. The thing I'm doing pretty good on is the wind. So if I click on this gust thing, I can get rid of it. And right now I can get rid of pressure too. All we're looking at now is, is this green representation is the wind speed in knots at 10 meters above the ground. This is the same thing we saw in the NOAA mediagram, although these are slightly off, they seem to still be accurate. And it's easier to predict the time and the actual speed here. All I have to do is settle my cursor over the, the particular time and it will tell me the time, 3 p.m. and the predicted wind speed, four knots, with even the, the degree bearing out of the west northwest. And I can go over any different time and it will tell me those, so it's a little bit easier to predict time. But there's also another way on here to use a different wind forecast that I think is a little bit more useful. And rather than the wind speed 10 meters above the ground, it's a wind speed at a particular pressure level. So to do that, I click over here, and there's two that I like to use, the 850 millibar wind and the 700 uh, millibar wind. 
The 850 millibar wind roughly corresponds to an elevation of around 5,000 feet, and the 700 millibar wind corresponds to elevations around 10,000 feet. So it gives you that uh, elevation related measurement, which I think is very useful. And I think what also helps us to do is predict sucker windows. So in the past, a sucker window is a window where the, the old NOAA mediagram forecast would show a short period of low winds. People would go out climbing and they would uh, encounter much harsher winds. So if you were to look at this forecast for right now, we would see that there's maybe uh, four different spots, maybe three different spots when the wind appears like it's going to be a little bit low. We can see one here uh, today, midday, another one here on Sunday morning, and then another one here on Wednesday, when all when the 850 millibar wind, the wind at 5,000 5, feet elevation dips pretty low. So those look like perhaps on, on the old forecasting method, those will look like a possible uh, window for climbing. But if we add in the 700 millibar forecast, we think, can see things a little bit differently. This is the elevation again at 10,000 feet. And you can see for that first window, it's forecasted to be the 850 and the 700 millibar wind are both forecasted to be low at the same time. We see them, you know, we see some a five and a six here where they're both pretty low, and then a, five, a six and an eight, which is I guess would be considered pretty low. But in the other time, but in, in these other potential windows, you'll see that the 700 millibar high elevation winds don't don't dip down as much. They're actually still pretty high, still at 10 or higher throughout this whole time period. And again, over here, always above 10 knots. And 10 knots, I think, is roughly the 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 wind speed that makes things climbable or unclimbable. Ideally, if you're going to go for like a big challenging objective for you, you're going to want them even lower, under five or, or less. My prediction, and this was based off my experience this year talking to other climbers and, and kind of picking and choosing the windows we went at, is when the 850 millibar wind speed is low, but the 700 wind speed remains high, this is going to be what historically we'd call a sucker window when the winds are going to be high up there and you're probably not going to have as nice of a time. That doesn't mean you can't go climbing and people won't be successful. It just means that the chances are a lot less. It's going to be a little more miserable and you need to be more aware of what direction the wind's coming from. So if I wanted to climb, let's say in this July 3rd window, I would note that the wind is all predicted to be out of the west, and I would look ideally choose an east-facing objective. And I'd be a little bit more conservative in my route choice, maybe choose a lower elevation peak, maybe climb with more people, maybe bring a little bit more gear to stay warmer. Often it's still worth trying to go climbing in one of these. It's just you want to be a little bit safer. Based off all three of these windows, the window I would choose that I'd be most excited to go climbing in would be the one that's coming today where we see the dip in both of them. And in this one, maybe I could choose something a little bit higher, but even still, we're talking about predicted wind speeds at elevation of six to eight knots, and that's not gonna be too pleasant. So I might still bring some extra clothing so I can stay warm. So that gives you a great idea. I think a, a more detailed representation of wind speed than you can get on the NOAA Mediagram. Padaclimb does have a little bit of instructions about how to pull up a NOAA Windgram, which is a little bit different. That looks like this, and this will give you wind speed at different pressure levels. So we here, see here again, there's the 850 that I like and the 700 that I like, but the, the graphical interpretation is a little bit trickier because rather than giving you the wind speed in knots numerically, it gives you it with these little wind bars and you have to count the bars to see what it's gonna be like. I think each bar, each full bar is 10 knots and the next one's five knots, but I'm not entirely sure. It's also to get pull these up, you have to click through those four web pages again. So just a little bit slower. So that's why I like the spot WX one more. So after you've selected a, a climbing window that you, you wanna try to to work in, let's say any one of these, you're also going to want to consider the reliability of the forecast because remember this is just forecasting for a single meteorological model. This happens to be the GFS. So if I want to examine reliability a little more, I can do that in two ways. One way that I like here is on this website called Media Blue, and you can just search Media Blue Multi-Model Cerro Shelton. Cerro Shelton is uh, the other native name for Fitzroy. You can also do for Cerro Torre or some other peaks in the area, and it'll give you a little bit of information. But this website's uh, useful because rather than just a GFS FS model, it, get, it includes eight other models to give you a better sense of reliability. All these models are going to basically start with similar atmospheric data, and they're going to plug them into different computers that run different algorithms and predict the weather slightly differently using different mathematical methods. I don't know the details of them, but I know that sometimes they say the same thing, sometimes, sometimes they do not. And the more that they say the same thing and they agree with each other, the more reliable you can the forecast is going to be. So if I want to first, we can start off by looking at this red one. This is the GFS 22. Basically, the same thing we were just looking at on the spot WX. So we can see that the, the wind speed forecast here in kilometers per hour extends out and it roughly corresponds to what we saw 
for, but we can also see that it includes these other models. And at that same point today, this afternoon, we see that all the models dip down and show lower wind for today. But later on for that other forecast, what was the other forecasted window? It was between Saturday and Sunday morning, Saturday night, Sunday morning. We can see that in that time zone, at that time spot, the, the models aren't quite in as much agreement and they don't all dip down at the same point in time. So if I was going to weigh those two models, I would say that the, the more upcoming one today looks better than the next one. And compared to the, the other window that starts in Tuesday afternoon, or excuse me, starts on Wednesday, we see even less agreement here. And I would be even more cautious about going big in that kind of window. The other thing that's useful here on the Media Blue website is this uh, wind direction graph. And so this is just another way of graphically representing which way the wind wind direction is predicted to be. Well, today, most of the forecasts are predicted to have roughly this wind direction out of the west or the southwest, and it's pretty reliable. I would say that that's where the winds can be coming from. But in a truly good weather window, the wind speed will be so low that the models will have a hard time predicting which way the direction the wind is going to come from. So you would see all these predictions to scatter and just kind of be a random collection of dots on the graph. You can see a little bit of that over here on Tuesday where the models don't agree with each other about which way the wind's going to be coming from. But in this instance, that's, what, five days out? This isn't necessarily an indication of a great forecast. Rather, it's just that five days out, the models aren't as accurate and you can't, they're not going to agree with each other as much. But if I were to see something like this coming tomorrow or the day after, I would feel pretty confident the wind is actually going to be very low and maybe it would um, give me the confidence to, to go for a bigger objective. The other way you can kind of get a sense of reliability of a forecast is using the a traditional weather map. And on the Paddock Lion website, Rolo provides a link to this German website called Wetter Zentral. And here, there's a lot of different parameters you can look at, but what I like to do is to go here and select load all maps. So this will load all maps throughout the, I guess we're looking at a 38 hour or 384 hour time period and I'll let them all load up. And then what you can do is you can play them and they'll run out like an animation. And what you're looking for is, this is the area around the Shelton Massif down here in Southern, basically right there. Basically the area where you wanna see a collection of isobars, these, these pressure lines that are far apart from one another, that indicates low wind. And you wanna see a concentration of them kind of settle over the region. So here, if we're looking at this, these kind of circles radiating out from each other, this is a big high pressure system. It looks like it's over uh, 1035 millibar, maybe even higher here in the center. And what I would want to see to, to feel like it's going to be a really good forecast is this all this whole center area to settle over southern South America. Unfortunately, we're not really seeing it. We're seeing some kind of waves of high pressure coming through the southern region, but nothing settling on. And that's often what you're going to see. You're going to see these things flow past the northern side. But if it were going to settle down here, then I would be confident the weather is going to be good. With what I'm seeing here, I, I'm not that confident, especially like we're looking 18 hours out now. It might be nice for a little while, but it doesn't it doesn't look like a long, stable high pressure system. This website is kind of cool because it, it gives you these different forecasting model options up here. We could go with the GFS one if we wanted to look at the a map of the model we were looking at on the SpotWX or the NOAA website. But it also gives you the European one, abbreviated ECMWF. And statistically, this is the best weather model for South America. It's a, a mildly better than the, the NOAA model. Unfortunately, I'm not aware of anywhere you can get a mediagram for this forecasting system that doesn't cost a lot of money. But with relatively large resolution and spread out only at 24 hour intervals you can get maps of it i like to, whenever i'm making a decision climbing decision i like to look at this a little bit and just check to make sure that the european model seems to agree with the american model and some of the other ones here and it, it basically in this instance it's, it's roughly agreeing it's it's calling for that same variable forecast spread out over the next week or so so in this instance looking at this forecast here i would be making a decision to climb a smaller objective likely likely bringing some extra clothing maybe climbing as a party three try to be very cautious about what I'm seeing and make sure that, it, that the wind speeds are aligning up with what I thought they were going to be. If they didn't, I would probably be pretty quick to turn around. But if you're lucky when you're down there, you know, maybe once every month or two, there will be these good forecast periods where you'll see two or three days with the wind speed down at five knots or less, the, the pressure extending up into the high 1020s or maybe even 1030, you know, much so kind of something like this, but extending out for a longer period of time. And those are the instances when I think it's okay to go big. Otherwise, I really advise caution consciousness and being conservative in your out choice and hopefully you can have a good time stay safe and enjoy all the beauty of that place